Hey everybody, it's Romanian Black. We're on episode six of Attack on Titan Junior High. <laughs> we're halfway through, halfway through the Junior High series, and that means we're halfway closer to sadly being done. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty sad. <laughs> so at this point, um, I've had a lot of people ask about the recap. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm taking my time because it's the one time I will have the opportunity to take my time on something that involves Attack on Titan. So I am taking my time with it, scripting it and getting things ready for it and all that good stuff. So so it will be coming at the end of Attack on Titan Junior High. I am going to do that at the very end after the week after episode 12 premieres, we'll do the recap. And then um, I have the Attack on Titan the high school cast that I was sent links to the audio drama and I want to react to that. And then I'll be trying to figure out maybe, you know, maybe within the next six weeks, they'll give us some kind of clue as to when part three is coming out so that I can kind of start planning the manga reviews <laughs> and leading up to that. So we'll see. But, um, but that's all in the future. We talk about the present. So last episode was really cute. It was a pretty, I didn't have a lot to discuss about it because it was all just about them studying. And I think that finals week was happening for real with my job. And so I was like, mm hmm. <laughs> It's like, why are we watching Attack on Titan involved with studying? But it was really cute to see Armin and Sasha and Connie interact. We don't, I don't feel like we got enough with like Armin and Sasha interacting. So that was really cute. And then I'm um, kind of getting to see like how they study and seeing Jean and Aaron like with Levi and all of them. That was really fun. It's cute to see some of these character interactions that, you know, back in seasons one and two, I feel like we had more of this like, ensemble interaction and then now in seasons three and four things get a little more dicey and those character interactions there's not those little wholesome sweet moments between characters anymore because impending doom so what can we do with that but I am excited to get to this episode because I watched the preview and it's called love letter so I had to wear like a little valentine's uh, theme here but love letter huh I, I get excited because attack on titan I the fandom we ship hardcore many many different ships in Attack on Titan because Isayama doesn't believe in romance and won't give us any. I'm like, I just imagine Isayama is just teasing all of us. He's married now. So you figure his wife is like, hmm, maybe we should put some more romance in Attack on Titan. And in season four, it kind of, we'll talk about that when we get to the recap, but there is a little bit more in season four, more shippy moments than, than usual that are canon or possibly canon. So... I am excited to get into this episode. A lot of people commented in the last episode about their ship of Annie and Aaron. And I'll be honest, season one, I was shipping Annie and Aaron. I really was. And then towards the end of the recap for season one, I was like, well, I can kind of see maybe Armin and Annie. And now I'm like, Armin and Annie all the way. But I do have a couple comments before we start. Um, this relates to episode three that um, came out on YouTube last week. So Jack L commented about Annie and Aaron. Uh, he was like... Annie and Aaron making peace and communicating after such a violent game seems like quite the miracle in itself. I was like, ah! <laughs> I was like, yes, oh my God. If we got Chibi, Kenny, and Uri, I would die. But this is all about seasons one and seasons two. So we're not sadly, I hope they make maybe an Attack on Titan High School and we get to see Kenny and Uri. I feel like Kenny and Uri, their subject matter is maybe a little bit too mature for junior high. We gotta upgrade to high school before we get into that, right? But a Chibi Uri and Kinney, I would I would just fangirl all over the place. But that's hilarious. Like, what a precursor. Like, hmm, getting into the themes of the show, huh? Hmm. <laughs> that was really great, Jack. I liked that a lot. And then Felipe Cortez uh, commented about how in the manga version of Attack on Junior High, and I forget there's a manga version of this, that Aaron is asked to define Mikasa. And he says, quote unquote, she is sweet badass and has no embarrassing stories and is a better character oh that's sweet that he defends her and her character in this i want to see more of her in the actual series maybe in part three we'll get more of her it seems like as we we've started to get more of her in season four part two and so i'm hoping that continues on to part three because mikasa she's such an interesting character but we don't hear enough from her and so i'm like isayama give us more of this character please but um, we'll talk more about that in the recap, but thank you guys for those comments. Those were great. But yeah, I, I'm honestly ready to start this episode and it's only season one and season two. So I'm not going to get my hopes up, but honestly though, if they made like a attack on Titan high school and had the warriors and had little chibi peak and chibi galliard and Falco and Gabby running around, that'd be awesome. I would love that, but who knows? Maybe in the manga they get to that point. 
I don't know. I'm curious if the manga is still ongoing. I'm assuming somebody will comment down below if the manga for Attack on Titan Junior High just covered seasons one and season two or if it's kept going. That would be curious. It'd be neat to know if that's actually a thing. But we've talked enough. We need to start the episode. So we're going to start Attack on Titan uh, Junior High episode six. And we're going to do that here in five, four, three, two, one, and let's go. <laughs> the, the funny thing is, the funny thing watching this episode is the whole time I was like, but there's no character that at this point, canonically, in season one and season two, had a thing out for John. That was kind of the whole point in season one and season two. I mean, unless you shipped Marco and John, which I hardcore do and did, um, there, John really didn't have any other person he was romantically involved with, right? So, I mean, Marco is pretty much it. And then as the series has gone on and we've developed more of John's character, then you could you, some people ship him and Armin together. I see Armin and John more as like best friends. I don't really ship them romantically, but I see, I get why people would. But that, um, Marco's ghost, them bones, them ashy bones, um, there's that. And then, honestly, go, even going into season four, I don't see Annie and Jean together, which is why this episode I was like, really, we're pushing this? Um, but I do, I do think if Jean is shipped with anybody at this point, it's either Mikasa or Peek. Because they both fit his type. They have, like Marco, the dark black hair. And they have the great personalities. And they're leaderly. And they're leaderly and take charge, but compassionate too. And I would say Peek and Mikasa are both compassionate like Marco as well. Just kind of in a different... They communicate differently. And their personalities are different than Marco's. But the the intent, the goodwill is still there. Their, their heart's in the same place as Marco's was, I believe. Um, more so Mikasa than Peek. But... It's so funny that it was the Titan that gave him the love letter. And at the very end, if you ship Peek and Jean, it's like, well, Jean finally did fall in love with the Titan or a Titan fell in love with him. It's like, hmm. But it's funny because I'm pretty sure in season three, when we do the flashback and see all the, um, all the restorationists that are in the group with Grisha, I'm pretty sure the one that gets turned into that Titan is a man. Which is funny because one, at the time, the animation studio had no clue about season three. So they just saw it looked kind of feminine. Let's just make it a girl. But two, if we're calling Jean our bisexual king, then it works, right? It doesn't matter either way. But this episode was really cute. There was lots of little animation moments that I wanted to talk about that are in the background that we didn't really get to. But again, of course, we start out talking about a serious romance, Marco and Jean. It's like... Marco and Jean aren't OTP, um, and sadly, a DOTP, um, but I just, I forget how tall Marco is. <clears throat> I always said, Mar I always confused at first when I started the series, Marco and Bertolt sometimes, because they're both really tall characters, but obviously, and they're not too different, but I, I love Sasha and how she's portrayed in this series, uh, and I also love her relationship with Connie. Because Connie never, like, at one point he hides behind the desk and he's like, oh, women. But Co Sasha's right there beside him. So that just shows, like, their friendship. And looking back now, based on season three and four, I'm like, yeah, Connie and Sasha, even though I kind of ship them, they are more like siblings, best friends, Connie and Sasha are. It's just really cute. And then, again, Franz and Hannah's only developed feature is that they are a couple. And they're like, us married? And, like, all the callbacks to season one. Like, okay. And then you can tell Jean's just frustrated because he wants a girlfriend so bad and there's no one at the school. And Marco's like, you know, what can we do? And then Aaron in this, like Aaron doing the thing, Aaron doing the hair flip with Mikasa and Jean just being, being like, I bastard, I'm so jealous. And Aaron's like, what? <laughs> I love that Aaron, Aaron is so oblivious to romance. He's so oblivious. Aaron doesn't understand romance in this series or in the actual series. He's like, what? No. And he confuses, and Aaron is just as clueless as Jean is. He's so clueless about romance that when Mikasa, I love the animation of Mikasa just upending, like throwing Jean over and grabbing Aaron. Like it's, it's the funniest damn thing. I want to get a screenshot of that. It's so damn funny. Uh, again, how will, how will Mikasa and the others defeat Aaron in season four, part three? Well, the answer this episode is that Aaron will suplex 
or uh, Mikasa will suplex Aaron and then carry him off away from the rumbling. Problem solved. We, we, we've solved it. This series is solving all of our problems. But I just, I love the animation. And then, of course, Aaron's like, I'm not your little brother or your kid. So, again, I feel like that's the show's subtle way, and we can relate to season four when we get to the recap, but the subtle way of saying Aaron does not want to be her little brother or her kid. I feel like Aaron wants to view Mikasa in a more romantic light. Maybe he just, one, doesn't really realize what he's saying and realize that's what he wants. And two, Aaron's self-esteem and self-worth is so low that he doesn't think he's worthy of being loved by anybody, much less someone he possibly has feelings for. So yeah, it's just, it's a nice little on the nose thing for the show to be like, okay, Aaron doesn't want to be her little brother or her little kid. What does he want to be to Mikasa? And it's like, well... <laughs> That's a whole thing in itself, right? And I like that Marco this whole time is telling him to calm down. The animation of him seeing the letter and stuffing his face into the locker is absolutely hilarious. It's great. And then, of course, we have I'm in love with you, I'm always watching you, which, which in itself is kind of creepy, the I'm always watching you. But Jean is so starved for affection that he doesn't care. It's fine. Okay. So... I like that we have, okay, if we go back here and see, I like seeing what characters are doing in the animation of this because it's usually really funny. But okay, so we have Knack and Thomas talking and then we have Marco working in his journal while Daz is, um, Daz is like lamenting his, his life in the background. Armin and Sasha are talking like in the last episode. And then of course, Bertolt and Reiner are up against the desks at the back of the room. Being mysterious, those two. You know, it's great. And then, of course, it's funny because in this series, we see Aaron's bedhead. We don't see Aaron with bedhead, I think, at all in the actual series. We see Mikasa with bedhead, but I don't think we see Aaron with it, which is funny. I A big part of me wants to see season four Aaron with bedhead, <laughs> like with his messy hair. His hair is far too stringy in season four, um, but it's so cute. And it's such a contrast where he's like, I went to bed after I took a bath and... Then Jean, I love Jean showing up with the, with the hand on the hip like, that's why you're still a kid. <laughs> like, just with this, what is this hairstyle? With the big, like, his hair's all combed and pristine. He looks like, I love everybody's reaction. Mikasa, no reaction, but Sasha and Armin and Aaron just being absolutely ridiculous. That's a great shot, too. This, this episode, a lot of funny shots. Um, but I love that Jean looks like, I don't know. It reminds me of, of Space Dandy. <laughs> like his hair reminds me of Space Dandy. I don't know how else to explain it. It just does. It's great. A bat and I love that Mika says, like, I smell a bathroom air freshener. <laughs> Mika says, not wooed by cologne. Let it be known. He's like, you know why I'm so cool? And Aaron's like, not really. <laughs> The animosity between John and Aaron in this episode is amazing. Aaron's like, I don't care about you. <laughs> Since you're so insistent. And, and Armin's just humoring him. And the love letter. Mm -hmm. I like that even though Aaron's like, I don't care. Who is the first person to snatch the letter? Aaron. It's like, of course. Yeah. That shot's really great. Oh, that shot's really great too. I want to get that. What is it? Yeah. It, John has such a smug look on his face. He has such a smug look on his face when he gets it. It's great. But yeah, it's like a love letter. It's not signed. And then the funny thing is, is that Armin, Armin, when he gets the letter, he's like, it could be a prank. <laughs> it could be a prank. And I love that. It's so funny because he's like, oh, it might just be a prank. And John's like, wait, what? Are you, are you kidding? No. I want to get a shot of this because that, sh that screenshot's really good. There, again, there's a lot of good shots in this episode. But yeah, Jean's like, don't you dare say that my my could-be love is just a joke. <laughs> That's so amazing. And Mikasa just does not care. She's the least worried about any of it. You can see Reiner looking pretty smug in the background there behind Aaron too, which is funny. She's just shy. And he just stomps away with his devil bag. He just wanted to brag. And of course... What's funny is that Jean sits down and Marco's like, cool hairdo. Like, Marco's the one complimenting him and being a genuine, like, could-be partner. And Jean just is oblivious. You're oblivious to what's right in front of you. Oh, my gosh. I love these, these drawings on the side here, the drawings of everybody. Bertolt just looks super sad. Reiner looks like a titan which is funny. He has like the pointy teeth. Reiner's picture looks like a Titan. 
Connie and Sasha both have potatoes in theirs and have the same expression. It's really cute. I'm trying to see. There's a Aaron's drawing is like immaculate. Mikas is like drawing him perfectly. And then Mikas's drawing is actually really good too. And then there's Ymir and Krista and Annie. Ymir's looks interesting. But so we go through this whole spiel of him trying to figure out who the person that likes him is. And at first he's like, well, maybe it's Potato Girl. Maybe she's just putting on an act. Maybe it's, and but then when he dreams of going on a date with her, she just eats him out of house and home and spends all his money on food. And I, I like that, that line, that one-liner, it's so cheesy. He's like, with you, I feel like I, I can eat a lot. It's like, <laughs> no. And then they go to the ramen place and he just gets like ate under the table by her. And he's like, no, she'll eat me out of, she'll spend everything I had on food. And so then he, then he imagines Krista, aka Historia, as this. And saying, well, she, and she does fit the impression on the letter, which is funny because she's, you know, she's the, the royalty for them, for the subjects of Ymir. And I like that Krista, and this kind of ties back to season two when they're, or it ties back to season one, not even season two, when they were trying to chase after Annie and Krista saved John and Reiner and Armin. And they were like, oh, she's a goddess. Oh, she, I'm going to marry her. That ties back to her. And so it's a really cute saying. It's like, my sweet goddess. And even Sasha says, are you God? It's like, <laughs> but then I really am surprised that, because it's like, give me her, she's boyish. Get your paws up, get your paws off Krista, my Krista. It's like, yeah, I'm surprised Jean wasn't like, oh wait, no, she's with Krista. We can't have nice things. Jean imagining himself with Ymir, that is a crack ship I never thought I would even imagine, but no. <laughs> Ymir would destroy him. <laughs> I love, but I love that she's like, my dear Krista. And she's like clutching her chin. I'm sorry about this, <laughs> but I have to be with Jean. <laughs> I'm the one who's going to marry Jean. Again, Ymir is a Titan shifter. So that's funny that Jean imagining himself with Ymir and it's like, well, you could be with Peak. So I'm just basically using this episode to push my Peak and Jean agenda. <laughs> so yeah, the perfect drawing of Aaron with Kirishkiro. Um, Daz looking awful and just with his head on the desk. Someone drew, it looks like, I guess it's Hannah with the hearts. That's what it is. Okay. And somebody drew Armin. Very cute. Okay. It's funny. We can't see who drew what in the background. I, well, I, you can, I just can't read Japanese. And so then I can't believe he imagined himself with, with Petra. It makes sense because she's about their age. She's an upperclassman in this. So that makes sense. Um, again, another crack ship, but the, the Rico Jean crack ship what? That's amazing. I I laughed so hard when Rico turned around. She was like, I'm always tough on you. But to tell the truth, like the older, the older woman. Oh my God, John. And John just malfunctioning. Our boy is not mature enough yet for any relationship. Other than Marco, who tries to ground him in reality. There's too many to pick from. And then yeah, Annie showing up is surprising. What should I do? What the hell is this problem? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And then I like that. I like that Aaron. Aaron walks over and is like, you're getting caught up in a fantasy world. I just, God, Aaron being the one to say it. It's amazing. And then of course, Armin and Mikasa help him. Your brain's definitely having problems. And John's like, well, if it wasn't any of them. I like that as he looks down, he's like, could it, he says Mika said, but I'm like, could it have been Armin? Could it have been Aaron? He's like, it's too good to be true if it was Mika said. Oh, we'll talk about this in the recap about their relationship. But yeah, oh my gosh. And he tries to imagine, and then I like that Aaron's like, creepy. <laughs> Aaron talking about romance and it being creepy is hilarious to me. Yeah. So I like that he does not get the dream with Mikasa. That's the thing. He doesn't get the vision with Mikasa liking him. He does with Annie even, but not Mikasa, which is funny. And then maybe it was just saving up for season four when we got the the vision, the fantasy of her and him and Mikasa. We eventually get it. It just took four seasons. Oh, I like that Daz, Daz who's had his head on the desk the entire time, lifts his head up and looks terrified when he sees Annie. And back in season one, Daz was terrified of the Titans. So it's like, ah, it's that little subtle connection, right? Which at this point, everybody watching this series probably knows that Annie is a Titan shifter. So, and Armin is scared of Annie too. That's funny. Armin's scared of Annie, but Mikasa and Eren seem like 
pretty neutral about her. Interesting. And so then, but then we have Annie and Mikasa having this face off and John just malfunctioning because he can't process the idea of these two girls that are hot that he likes fighting over him. Okay, so, oh, Thomas, I see. Thomas is there with, I thought it was Reiner at first, but Thomas is in the drawing behind Mikasa with like the drool and stuff coming out of his nose. R.I.P. And then I guess that is Knack behind him doing the peace sign looking like a really good drawing of Knack. Hmm. Interesting. But for some reason, oh my God. Okay. There's no one around us. Okay. So we have Armin. Armin has, Armin has skedaddled to the back of the room, the corner, terrified that Mikasa and Annie are going to fight each other. Aaron is like, what's up Mikasa? Jean is like, what's up Annie? Um, Marco has evaded to the chalkboard. Um, Daz has taken, Daz has kicked his chair out and gone and hid under a trash bin. Amazing. Um, Knack is like, what? Um, Ymir's holding Krista. Sasha and Connie are hiding behind the desk. Thomas is behind the desk. And Melius is behind the desk. And then you see Bertolt and Reiner. And Reiner's like this on the desk and Bertolt's hiding behind him. I just, I love the composition of these shots. These are great. Just like little Easter eggs. The dream match is happening again from season one. Women are scary. Oh my God. And then I like John's like, how many conflicts have I'm calling, causing? I'm so sinful. And then just like in the OVA where Jean inserts himself into the role of Aaron, Jean's like, wait a minute. He's like, remember when Annie was fighting over me? And he inserts himself into the dodgeball match being like, well, that's why Annie liked me. And it's like, she wasn't even talking about you at the time. She was talking to Aaron, but, but Jean's inserted himself. Also, when the love letter drops and Jean grabs it and Annie gets it back from him, the, the shot, she conveniently makes it to her skirt. Nothing shows. It's like, it was very well done. Very well done. Nicely animated. But oh my God, that's great. And so him debating on whether or not, and I was like, there's no way Annie has a crush on Jean. No way. No way, shape, or form. No, no. But I like that throughout this entire episode, connecting back to season one, Marco's like, look, I don't want you to get upset with me, Jean, but you aren't popular among girls, so you should face the reality of the situation. <laughs> I love that because that's like one of the big themes that Marco... Marco tells John back in season one, he's like, you're such a good leader because you can face the reality of situations. Like you can look at what people struggle with and he's like, you're a coward. You're not the most popular person, but because of that, you're able to look at situations realistically and you have good instincts. So he's like, it allows you to become a leader because of that. And that's like one of the big threads between Marco and Sean. And so here when John's like having this romantic panic attack, Marco just tries to reinforce those same values. He's like, you should face the reality of the situation like you normally do. And I like that Jean's like, shut up. <laughs> but it's so true, right? It's great. Oh my God. It's just, I love it. I love that they take the themes from season one with Jean and Marco and they just insert it here in this ridiculous love story plot. It's just amazing. And so yeah, that's when he imagines. And the thing of it is, is that when Annie... When Annie was talking to him, it's when he had the wig on. I just, I love how he inserts himself into this. It's great. Oh my God. And then Sasha's like, he clearly made up parts of that conversation. So I wanted to get the shot of him with the letter. I thought that was really cute. Yeah, that's really cute. I That might be the thumbnail is him with the letter and looking at it and Aaron and Marco and Sasha and Armin over his shoulder. Oh my God. But yeah, so meeting up at the park and Annie's like, this is embarrassing. I'm talking for a friend. And I was like, John, you were doing so well. You were doing fine. And then the moment he clenches his fist, I'm like, oh, he's going to confess. But he's like, if you really insist I could go out with you, I was like, John, you ruined it. You just ruined it. Because I'm like, if she, even if she had been liking you, saying, if you insist I could go out with you, it's like, really? Really? A guy like me is very popular. But you mustered up the courage to write me a love letter and she just flips him. She's like, screw you. <laughs> Which is what would happen in the reality of the show. Yeah. And he's like, already you're going to kiss me any time to prepare? And she's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> no, I'm just going to flip you over. Bye. I love it. Oh, my God. That shot, too. That shot's great. Annie's just flipping off all the guys. <laughs> And then, yeah, the one Titan. And, of course, she screams, and that's her ability. That's, oh, I love it. 
I love that they tie back everything from season one. They tying it back to her being a Titan shifter, tying back to the Titans with her and her going to cram school with the Titans. It'll be curious if they show Bertolt and Reiner going to cram school as well. That's going to be really interesting. Like, seriously. But yeah, old Jean. And Jean debates it for a moment. And then we find out that the reason why the Titan is infatuated with him is because they were running away from the Titan at the start of the episode and Marco fell. Marco fell and Jean did everything to try to save him. Because that's the thing. It's like a big what if scenario. Like what if Marco and Jean had been together when Marco, when they found Bertolt and Reiner? That, that's a what if rabbit hole. Like what would have happened? Would Jean have fought off Bertolt and Reiner? He probably would have lost. They probably both would have died. But would Jean have tried to protect Marco? I feel like from season one... When when John finds Marco, he wanted to protect him. And you know that John at that point was thinking, if I could have been there, I would have saved him. And it could have been a scenario like this where he tried to say he would have tried to save Marco from being eaten by the Titan. I don't think, though, the Titan that is behind the fence, the, the little scared Titan, um, that's not the one that ate Marco in the in the anime, in the series, in season one. I think it was one that got killed during, like, early on in Trost. Like, I think they killed it in the cellar, in the basement. But yeah, I love that he's like, oh, run, we have to run, Marco. And he throws the, the omelet rice to distract the Titans so they can run away. Yeah. And I like that Jean debates. He's like, oh, sure, it's a human. And again, tying to the fact that they're human. He's like, oh, these Titans are human. I could date them. It's like, well, sure, season four. You know, <laughs> I love it. But then, yeah, the Titan gets offended. Even a Titan gets offended by Jean trying to put the moves on them. And I love just the shot of the Titan with the tears streaming down his face running away. Amazing. And then Sasha's like, I'll let him experience what it's like to be popular. And then has the thing with the radish and the curry bun. And I like that everybody's just like, oh, Sasha. Sasha relating all her life problems to food. Oh, my gosh. Like, she just tries to help Jean and Jean just loses it. Just loses his mind. Oh my god. And Aaron's like, this is really sad. We should go home. <laughs> I don't think we need to be watching this anymore. We are we are having secondhand embarrassment for Jean. Our poor boy. Our poor lovesick boy. Oh my god. But the Jean great me? Oh my god. Stop it. I can't. I cannot. Mm -mm. <laughs> and he's like, this is just really sad. Oh my god. I just, I accidentally like hit the scroll down and someone in the comments said, Marco's been there all this time, you know, Jean. Yeah, even at the very end, Marco's the one that stays with him. Marco's always been there for him. Marco's always been there for Jean. Them damn bones. Uh, just rip my heart out and stamp on it. Why don't you? Why don't you? That's so sad. Oh. This was really cute. I, I did like this episode a lot. It was super cute. We only got, we're halfway through the series though. And now, and now I still want to see Chibi Irwin. I still want to see Chibi Irwin at some point and him interacting with, Irwin was pretty prominent in season one. So I'm like, come on, maybe he'll be the next, the preview for the next episode had something to do with Levi and the upperclassmen. So maybe, maybe Irwin will jump in there. All uh, right. See, they can't have Irwin in the series because if you ship Levi and Irwin, it would be, wouldn't be right because Irwin's the principal and Levi's a student. Wouldn't be right. So that's why we can't have him in this. <laughs> oh my gosh. But y'all. Yep. So this was a great episode. I, I'm very curious to know your thoughts down below. I'm still working on the recap. It's, it's going to be scripted. I'm just now starting. I, I'll be honest. I took a big break after season four, part two, because my brain needed it. <laughs> It needed to, it needed to refresh. So I am going to watch, I'm, I'm getting ready to rewatch all of season four, like all of part one and part two to prep for this recap. Because even though it's about part two, we need to touch base on part, parts of part one for certain things. But yes, yeah, so I'm going to start rewatching that, taking lots of notes. I'm almost through everybody's comments. I'm sorry it's taken me so long, but I've been taking my time because I can actually afford it this time around. So but I'm almost done with everybody's comments from episode 28. It's only taken six weeks <laughs> and, and all that. But oh my gosh, y'all, this was great. I really like this episode. I hope you all did too. But um, I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, we'll be back with episode seven next week of Attack on Titan Junior High. Bye.